LAN extension and virtualization using layer 3 protocols. It turns out there is a lot of overlap between virtualization and cloud computing. So by the time we finish all this virtualization, we have probably finished cloud computing as well. We'll have, um, so for clouds, we need virtualization and LAN extension is one of them. So let's see what is LAN extension. So basically we'll talk about what is LAN extension and we'll talk about two protocols, Trill and Lisp. And then next time we'll talk about the rest of them, which is NBO3, VXLAN, NVGRE, STP, etc., etc. So just to remind you where we are, um, if you remember, um, <clears throat> there are lots of things which are being done for virtualization, just too many. And so we are going to cover as many as we can. So today, in this module, we are doing Trill and Lisp, which belong in um, here, extension or aggregation, okay, using layer 3. We did little bit of MPLS, VPLS, etc., etc. before, PW, this was pseudo wire, etc. before. So uh, this was the part which was left over. And then next module, we do this, this part here. And if we have time later on, we do the other modules. But so here we are. We are going to talk about how to send traffic, L2 traffic over L3. And um, so basically, why do we need to do that? Because the data centers could be located in different places. And if you have more than one data centers, you want to be able to use them all at the same time for the same problem. Um, in case one goes down, you should be able to move all the traffic to the second one or, you know, or use both of them at the same time also. When you have two of them, you have two, three choices. <coughs> you could have called standby, which means that the second data center is just waiting, is not really doing anything. It's cold, means it's not hot, means it's not really working at all. So data is backed up on the tapes and is stored off-site. And if there is a problem, you bring the tape in and you run it. And that is what we used to do 20 years ago. Right, we don't use tapes anymore, and we don't do cold standby anymore. So what we do is hard standby. In hard standby, we take two servers, and then we exchange the data and the state continuously. So they keep track of what's going on. Okay, but it is still standby. So the difference between standby, so the second data center is not really doing the same job. It just keeping track of what the primary data center is doing and just copying the results. Okay. So that is hard standby. Two servers, synchronous or asynchronous data replication. Now synchronous and asynchronous. We have talked about this before. Synchronous and I don't know if anybody remembers now. What is a synchronous replication or synchronous write? At the same time we write before we return the, before, before we return the write, we have finished on both, right? In asynchronous, we write on one and we return, and the second one is queued, right? So that is asynchronous. All right, good. So the application, on a failure, the application automatically switches to standby, and this is what we did up to 10 years ago, or eight years ago. The problem with this method is, that um, you are losing half of your resources because the other half of the resources are just sitting there. So what we do now is active-active. And active-active means that everything is used at the same time, basically, and whenever you need, whenever you basically run into trouble, you just use half of them in the sense that you have, you have let's say, two computers, one here, one there. So you are using two computers. When one fails, you just use one computer. Obviously, half of the job will not be done, but you have not wasted any resources and you have been able to continue whatever is most important on the one that you have. All right? So the active active means that both things are being used for real jobs. So you understand the word active and standby. Standby means it is just waiting. Active means it is doing something. So if, if I hire two people, I give them two different jobs to do, and then if if one fails, then I give the most important job to the one that is left. In some cases, you need to do same task. For example, in Hadoop, we do three places same task, but that is, doesn't have to be different data center. It could be in the same rack, right? But here, 
we are talking about the data center data center availability right so we are not going to do the same task in two data centers so the data center interconnection problem is that you have um, two data centers and you want to connect them and um, and since you want to be able to move vms from here to there you want both data center to be on one ethernet right that means on same l2 domain everybody understand that right so everybody understand now that same l2 domain means one ethernet so that you can move anywhere and this can be used for disaster recovery for maintenance or migration for high availability for consolidation whatever reason you have you have two data centers and so you need to be able to make one ethernet out of them and um, and that way when you move they can use the same ip they don't have to worry about changing the ip and um, multicast can also be used if the you know basically to different destinations so this is the data center interconnection problem so today we actually talk about something like this data center interconnection uh, or lan this is also called lan extension now the reason the problem with the lan extensions are first of all broadcast storms if you have a lan which goes to many many machines 10000 machines or 20000 machines then you have lots of broadcast and the broadcasts are flooded right actually the whole thing we call it bum broadcast unicast and multicast all those three traffics are flooded and they can cause broadcast storm <coughs> then you have big networks means you can easily form loops um and therefore um, spanning tree gives you a lot of trouble we have already discussed this high spanning tree diameter and then new problem is that with with big network like this the the diameter of the spanning tree becomes very large that means the path from the leaf to the root from the leaf to the root that is called the diameter the maximum path that could be more than 5 or 6 or 7 and that means you know if you have a tree which is 7 deep you can imagine how much traffic will go through the root and so you don't want and that kind of stuff where the tree is very deep so root can become a bottleneck and become a single point of failure and multiple paths remain unused the bigger the tree the more paths are yeah more than 7 is the diameter so i just explain what is the diameter does anybody remember what what is the diameter of a network yeah the maximum distance number of hops from the leaf to the root and so if a tree is 7 deep that we call a diameter is 7 actually so we call a radius but you know <laughs> the depth of the tree is 7 uh, i don't think they define anywhere i i can go and check the uh, the definition that looks like the what i define is radius rather than the diameter diameter should be leaf to leaf right right going through the going through the center which is the which is the root but um, my understanding here was that the 7 is the depth of the tree okay then we define tromboning actually tromboning was in this slide which actually we had skipped this set of slide before but i will redefine what is tromboning basically what happens is that if you have data centers which are very far apart then your default gateway might be in this data center and you are in this data center when they had designed the default gateway technology at that time they didn't really think they thought that everything on one ethernet is very close 200 meters if you have five routers it doesn't matter which one you go so you randomly select one router as a default gateway right and that was then good then but now if you are 5 kilometers away then you really if you have two routers then it is better that the routers the, the the nodes here use the router which is on this side and the nodes here use the router which is on that side right but that that cannot be easily done because the whole thing is one ethernet and um, one subnet and so so what happens is if you are here and the router is there then your traffic first of all it has to be sent to that side to your default gateway and then the default gateway will send to you when you want to send it back response you will have to send it back again here and then it will go out whereas you could have gone out from here right so so basically you are just jumping back and forth between the two data centers 
because your gateway is on the wrong side and so basically 100% of the external traffic goes through this path. And security, basically because this is, this connection is going to the public domain, to the public property. This might be across the street or might be across the town or might be across the country. And therefore, um, you have to encrypt everything that goes on that extension.